Hello guys, uh, welcome back to MedZone African Motives, uh, still on our Engineering Science N2, and this is Dynamics from the Question Paper of November 2023 exam uh, as our request. Uh, so I'm just going to work on it, I'm just going to work on this paper. Uh, yeah, we're going to have uh, two, we are going to work on it uh, definitely, but uh, I'm just going to work topic by topic, then if possible, work the whole paper uh, as we requested, guys. So this is Dynamics, like I said, uh, November 2023, the first question 1.1, define the term acceleration, the term acceleration. We know that we use this term when we are comparing the issue of the speed, whereby uh, we are now talking about the velocity, uh, how it is changing, all right? So it's simply the rate of change of what? Of velocity. So this is simply is the rate of change. So this is the rate of change of velocity, all right? We're talking about uh, the rate of change of velocity and measured in what meters per square second so this is measured in meters per square second like that or you can write this as meters uh per square second this way it's one and the same thing all right that's how you can present the meters per square second concept but you can even leave it like that so that's acceleration for you whereas this velocity here is the rate of change of displacement they can ask you this so that one is the rate of change of displacement and is measured in meters per second. You're supposed to know that. All right. Anyways, uh, 1.2, uh, it's only that you see these papers, guys, that you send to me. Somehow they'll be, but uh, I just hope it's clear, even though it's just uh, a little bit shrinked up, uh, like you see how, how it is, it, but just hope you can properly see it. They are saying here 1.2, a car is traveling at... 36 kilometers per hour for a certain time, which is eight seconds. So this is taken for eight seconds. Take note, they, it's a statement. We are done here. A comma indicates that it's a continuation, yes, but it's another part, another phase now. When it begins to accelerate at two meters per, se per square second uh, for 16 seconds. Okay. So it has traveled, it, it is traveling at 36 kilometers per hour for eight seconds. At these eight seconds after that, then when it begins to accelerate at, after the eight seconds, that is when it now begins to accelerate at two meters per square second for 16 seconds. So these are two phases that we have. There is the first phase, this one. Okay, let's just, this is our phase one. And this is the second phase, which is our phase two. Because the first phase, it is traveling at this speed for eight seconds. It's a const. It, it, it's if we, if if I'm saying a car is traveling at uh, 180 kilometers per hour, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a speed that it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a speed that is uh, constant there. What does it mean? If the speed is constant, it's like this. The velocity is constant. The, the, there is no acceleration. You are not changing the velocity. Remember, acceleration happens when there is now a change in velocity over the change in time. So if the change in velocity, there is nothing, there is no change in velocity because the velocity is maintained at 36, meaning to say the change in velocity is a zero. So there is no acceleration, no matter are you going to travel for five hours or for what. So there are two phases here. The second phase, there is now an acceleration there. Right, but that is not the case. The first question, okay, it's fine. 1.21, determine the following, the initial velocity of the car in meters per second. The initial way it started at 36 kilometers per hour, that is our initial velocity in this case. All right, so that's 1.21. Our initial velocity is U, which is given as 36 uh, kilometers per kilometers per hour but they need this speed in meters per second remember from our formula sheet we are given that one meter per second is equal to 3.6 kilometers per hour so you can take that as an advantage because we've got a, a conversion take place in kilometers per hour so how are we going to convert this back you simply divide these two right so that's how you convert to meters per second you divide this to 3.6 you multiply one meter per second so it's simply dividing 36 over 3,6 all right what you want over what you're given you want this it's equivalent so it is the one that you write on top 
36 over 3,6 is going to give you uh, 10. So that's 10 meters per second because you're going to multiply this to one meter per second, all right? So that's on 1.21, our U is going to be equal to 10 meters per second. It's just a straightforward conversion. One meter per second is equal to 3,6 kilometers per hour what about 36 kilometers per hour so it, it can be from meters per second to kilometers per hour you can use this conversion for any all right then let's check the other part of the question now they are saying here um 1.22 the final velocity of the car in meters per second all right then after that they are asking us to draw a fully labeled velocity time graph okay i want us to have this uh properly so that we'll be able to answer this question okay they want us to calculate the final velocity of the car meaning to say after the 60 after everything after the 16 seconds this is what is happening i want us to be clear here we this is our initial velocity so i just want to have a sketch so that you understand me which is a 10 meters per second right our initial velocity is a 10 meters per second i'm just going to have a sketch like this All right remember this is our time this is our velocity so it is at a certain point it did not start at zero because Initial, it is traveling and it is already traveling. We we we, we took the, the 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 part of the graph when the car is already traveling. It's not from zero like this. No, it's already traveling at uh this which is ten meters per second. Remember. So let's say this is where we have our ten from zero. Let's say this is five and this is ten. Five ten somewhere here. So it is already traveling at ten meters per second. Remember velocity in meters per second. Then. It, it, it travels at uh, this speed. It's constant speed, remember? It's constant for eight seconds. So it is e e equivalent to a certain time that was taken, which is in eight seconds. But what happens that is that when it begins to accelerate now, there's now an acceleration. It was supposed it then begins to accelerate. That was the statement properly to, to be given. At this, at this uh, acceleration, this is the, the rate of what? Of change now. There's now an acceleration. All right? Remember, acceleration is going up. For eight, for, for, for how many seconds? For 16 seconds. For 16 seconds. So this is going to correspond or the time. It's only that here you might see this big uh, and this one small. Don't consider that. All right? Consider the values not to say from here to here it's big, from here to here it's small. All right? So they are saying the acceleration here, it happened for 18 for 16 seconds so it was between this period here in in between here we have got 16 seconds so if we add 16 plus 8 it means we are going to end up at our main seconds we are going to end up at a point where we've got uh 20 24 so this is going to be 24 so at 24 seconds what is the equivalent velocity here so this is how you take it uh, if you it's not like you're supposed to draw the graph no you just needed to understand your, your graphical part before before you draw it. This is what you're supposed to just understand is that this is the speed that is constant. So it is your initial velocity between this phase, this one, when it begins to accelerate here, this is a phase that we have, it's a second phase. But in that phase, what is important that you just need to take is that the speed that we had is the same, the velocity is the same because it was it, it was constant it was maintaining that velocity up to this point so at that point here that velocity that we had initially is still the same velocity that we have here so it means here at this condition initially we have the velocity here which is what which is 10 which is our u so that is what we have on 1.22 so on 1.22 what we understand is that initially we have got a velocity of 10 meters per second, even though we do not know the final velocity because they need us to calculate that final velocity. But what we know is that there we are given the time and also the acceleration between this period. The acceleration is two meters per square second and the time is 16 seconds that was taken from, from the in within here, from eight to 24, that is we said, 8 plus 16, 24. We don't take 24. We take the time that was taken in between from 8 to 24, which is the 16 that we are given. So we have got acceleration of 2, time of 16 seconds. This is what we have. So we have got acceleration of 2 meters per square second here. There's an acceleration of 2 meters per square second. And remember, we said our time 
is 16 seconds. So what is going to be the V? So this one, you're simply taking your what? Your formulas, right? Remember from our formula, V is equal to U plus AT. What we want to calculate is the, uh, sorry, is the V, this one. So we can take it direct. So V is equal to U, the initial velocity there of 10 meters per second plus the acceleration two times the time that was taken when the car is accelerating. It took 16 seconds in that period of acceleration. We do not know what is going to happen later on. We are not told, but we are just told for that first 16 seconds that it was what? Accelerating. I mean, for the last 16 seconds, it was what? Accelerating. That is for the second phase. So that is it. You're going to get 42 meters per second. Okay. So that is our final velocity. So it was just a matter of you understanding that the velocity that you started with here is still the same as the one that you're going to have. Then now they want us to draw this a fully labeled velocity time graph. So on your drawing part, guys, nothing is going to change. You're just going to have this, but uh, make sure that you just have this uh, according to scale. So you're just going to choose according to scale. What is important? Uh, let me just remove it and write it and just try to have it here. Remember, we got our V as what? Our V, we got it as 42 meters per second. So what is important here is uh, for you to just have your vertical and uh, horizontal uh, line of which, okay, here I'm just going to show you a sketch, guys. You're going to do the right thing, but here I'm just going to show you a sketch. All right, uh, because these things for, uh, for me to have it accurately is going to be very, very difficult uh, because of these softwares, guys. You know, these softwares, they, they tend to misbehave uh, when you are at a point of presentation. I don't know why and how does it happen that way. But anyways, this is it. You're going to have your, vet, uh, your horizontal line representing uh, the time axis. All right, remember, we've got the time axis. And also we've got the velocity axis, the part of the velocity on this side. So this is the velocity axis here. Gonna have our velocity that side. Okay, so it's not a problem. Uh, let me try and have this side, throw it here. So this is at point zero. And we say this is our velocity, all right? We remember we need the velocity time graph. So this is our velocity measured in meters per second and the time measured in seconds. So I don't know, according to your scale, maybe you're gonna take this as uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, uh, up to 24. Remember, we are, this is our sketch here. We are supposed to go up to, up to 24. This is our final part, our final time, 24. Or we can take eight, 16, 24, or two, four, six. Uh, I don't know what's gonna be appropriate with your scale and the graph uh, that you are having up to a point where you reach what? You reach 24. All right, so it's up to you on that one. How are you going to take it uh, up to your scale? Or you can even use 4, 8, 10, all right? You can even use 4 uh, to represent one box, then 8, uh, 4, 8, 12, uh, 16, uh, 20. We add 4, that will be 24, up to 24. You're going to have 28 and so on. It's, it's fine. Then for the velocity, remember the maximum velocity there is supposed to be at 30. Starting from a velocity u, uh, we have our information here, our u at what? 10 meters per second. So even you can choose the scale one box to represent 10 meters per second. So you can even have that 10, uh, 20, uh, 30, uh, 40, and so on, 50, and so on, and so on, all right? So you just have to take what is the uh, proper according to your scale. This is you and your graph where you are drawing and so forth, or where you are having the sketch. All right, so what is important is that we are moving at uh, the initial velocity at 10, and this is going to up, up to 8 for 8 seconds. Remember, it covered this for 8 seconds. This is what we have here. It was covered. The 10 meters per second was covered for 8 seconds. So it earned the time frame of 8 seconds. So 8 must correspond with 10. So that's the first thing that we need here. Uh, this 8 here on time must correspond with the velocity of 10. Uh, I think it's maybe somewhere ahead there. So you're just gonna draw a straight line up to that point. All right, so let's just have a straight line here, drawn, joining these two points, just supposed to be a straight line because this is uniform velocity, uh, constant velocity. There is no acceleration here. The acceleration hasn't started. Then the acceleration started here after the eight 
seconds. There is now acceleration uh, for these 16 seconds that are remaining from eight up to 24, up to the final velocity of what, of 42. So 24 must correspond with 42. I don't know, maybe your 42 is gonna be somewhere here, but it must correspond with 42 according to scale. If you are using 10 boxes, it's gonna be two boxes from what, from 40. If you are using two boxes to say like, uh, you're using five boxes here to represent 10, it means one box is gonna represent 42 from 40. You just take one box according to what you are using to draw your graph, right? It's up to you guys. It's uh, it's up to you how you're gonna present it. But what is important are these major points that you are going to show. So this is it up to this point, you're gonna join uh, to show that uh, there is an acceleration that is happening. There's no need uh, for you to, to write that this is acceleration, which is equal to two. No, 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 no. No, 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 it's not like that. Just just indicate your graph like that. All right. So here uh, it's going to be something like this straight up to 24. Uh, then it's going to be vertical uh, horizontally. We're going to need the horizontal one here. Going to need the horizontal, the last one. Uh, you see this ruler now, it's hiding from me. No problem. Just going to take it off. Uh, and try work with another thing. All right, guys, let's just hope it not affect you. Sorry for that. All right, so you see what I was saying that time that these softwares, sometimes they just tend to misbehave when you want to use it properly, it misbehaves. But no problem, guys, we are together. We are together. That's it, just join somewhere here. Straight to the uh, vertical axis, all right? So something like this. Just gonna have something like this, okay? So that's it. So this is your velocity time graph, all right? So it's a constant part, then acceleration part, okay? So there are two phases, like I was saying, the first phase, when the velocity was constant at 10 meters per second, which was 36 kilometers per hour, then the acceleration, which was a two meters per square second, remember this was your acceleration part. So that's how you were supposed to have it, just like that, all right? All this, you're gonna get full marks. Uh, then, they are saying from the graph that we just drew, from the velocity time graph, determine the displacement of the car to max. The displacement that is simply equivalent to the area under the graph. This is the displacement like for the whole journey. So the displacement is simply equivalent to the area under the graph. Even if they ask you to, 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 to if they give you as a speed time graph, then they ask you to calculate the distance. You simply calculate the area, all right? So this displacement, uh, the displacement is simply equivalent to area under the graph. So it's gonna be area under the graph. All right, that's it. So if it is the area under the graph, we've got two sections here. The first section, which is a rectangle. So we've got the first section, that's a rectangle, the shape that we are having here. That's a rectangle. All right, so that is the first section that you're going to have, uh, which is a rectangle. And we understand that the area of a rectangle is length times breadth or length times width. Up to you. Length times breadth or length times width. The second phase under the graph is a trapezium. This whole shape here is a trapezium. All right. Or you can take it as, or you can take it like this. You can take it this way. The wall part like this, you take it as a triangle, this one. The wall of this, you take it as a triangle, then you take the last triangle on top, all right? Or you can just take as two phases. This one, you calculate the area of a trapezium. Guys, I've told you the area of a trapezium. We have worked with this one. Don't forget it, all right? So we said it's half sum of the parallel sides, these two sides, which are parallel to each other times the perpendicular height. So remember, that is the area. So you're going to add to that area because we are saying it's a combination of the two. So it's going to be half sum of the parallel size times the perpendicular height because we've got uh, a rectangle and a trapezium, right? So for the rectangle length times width from this point, it's 10 here. Yeah, this side is 10 and this side it's 8. So that's 10 times 8 like this, all right? Plus... The trapezium, we're going to have half sum of the parallel sides. This side here the, the, is equivalent to, to 10. So it's going to be half of 10 plus the wall of this side here, which is equivalent to 42. Remember, that is 42 there. Our velocity was corresponding 
at uh, 42 meters per second, the final velocity, this one V, all right, times the height. The height is the one that is taken in between these two lines, which are perpendicular. The distance between that is at perpendicular is 16. Remember, we said in between here, we've got 16 seconds of the acceleration, or you can simply subtract 24 minus 8 you get this 16. So you're going to multiply to 16, just like that. All right, so the first phase, if you multiply, this will give you 80. So that's 80 plus, uh, if you combine this whole part, you're going to get something like uh, 416. So that's 416. And if you add, that is going to be 496 meters. All right, so that is the displacement uh, taken. All right, what if I wanted to use formulas? That's the question. That's the question now. All right, I want to use formulas here and I want to calculate the total displacement. All right, the understanding is supposed to be like this. I'm just gonna put the diagram aside here. Okay, uh, we could have calculated the same displacement, uh, which is S, remember displacement is S. So that's 1.25. Okay, uh, 1.24, sorry, we are still on 1.24, 1.24. All right, so this is another way that we could have used. All right, remember that displacement can be calculated from the formulas. S is equal to, we've got this formula, S is equal to UT plus half AT squared. But it needs someone to understand it. You need to understand the formula. What does it mean? Okay, what does this formula mean? All right. From this, we've got U with the initial velocity, the time, the acceleration. So it follows that, we're gonna, we are going to calculate, we are going to use this formula in phases, just like what you did on, on area. The first phase here, this is our first phase here. This is where we are here. What is our U? S is going to be equal. So let us just write S1. We're gonna have S1 here, then we're gonna calculate S2. So S1 is going to be U times T. U is our initial velocity here, which is 10. So that's 10 times the time in the first phase. In the first phase, the time, well, sorry, for uh, eight seconds, the whole of this time here from zero to eight. That is our time, eight seconds, all right? Plus the second phase, this one, there is no need for us to calculate this because there is no acceleration here. Remember, if there's no acceleration, this part does not work. But just for the sake of uh, revision, our acceleration is not there. I in the first phase, acceleration is constant. So it's what? Uh, it's zero. The acceleration is zero because velocity is what? Constant. So the acceleration there is what? It's a zero times the time, yes, the time is eight seconds, which is fine, so it's gonna be eight seconds. Remember, we are still on the first phase of our diagram, all right? So this was gonna give us S1, which was gonna be 80 meters. This part was gonna give us a zero. All right, so this is the, for the first phase. You calculate S2 for the second phase from the same formula, UT. This is our second phase. What is our U? The initial velocity in the second phase, it's what? We are still at U. This is our initial velocity at 10. So that is going to be 10 times T. The time in the second phase, in this phase, the time is from eight to 24. So in between eight and 24, what is the time? The time is 16. So it's going to be times 16 plus half of the acceleration. Now there's an acceleration. Remember in the second phase, that's where we are given the acceleration of what? Of two meters per square second. So the acceleration there is, is, is given. So that's times two. Uh, so that's half of two times T squared, the same time that we used uh, from eight to 24, which is the 16 seconds, but this will be uh, 16 squared like that, okay? So that, that's the idea. The first one you calculate is displacement. The second one you calculate is displacement. So this was gonna give us uh, 160 plus 256. And if we add this, we are going to obtain uh, 416, that's 416 meters. So this is the first displacement of the first region. The second displacement, that is for the second region, we combine these two. You are going to see this is exactly the same, 80 and 416. This is what we have, 80 and 416. So it's meaning to say, therefore, if we add S, it's going to be S1 plus S to the first displacement, 80 plus the second displacement of 416. That is going to give us uh, 496 meters. So you can see that we could have calculated the same displacement from different ways. Using the formula, you are supposed to understand how the formula operates. 
Also, when using area under the graph, you're supposed to understand how do you take your area under the graph. Consider the shapes that are given. It's, there's so many ways of taking these areas as long as you understand. All right. So I want you to, to prove that with another way of calculating the, like you can calculate the area of the whole triangle. Yeah, I mean, this whole rectangle like this, then you are remaining with a triangle or you can calculate this as a rectangle. You calculate this as another rectangle and a triangle there on top of them, there can be three shapes. So I want you to prove that. Try any anyway and see if you're going to get the same answer. That is how you calculate displacement. It's simply what? Area under the, the graph. That's it. All right. So let's check another question. Uh, still on one point, on one, on question one, point two. One point two five, the average velocity of the car. The average. This is not like a velocity at a point. It, uh, uh, no. Because they can ask you the velocity at a point uh, where time is this. But yeah, they want the average is for the whole journey. This is the speed. This is the velocity for the whole journey. So the average velocity for the whole journey is simply the displacement over time. That's how you calculate uh, the average uh, velocity. So that's 1.25. Uh, the average velocity is simply uh, going to be given as the displacement over the time. So that's the total displacement over the time taken, total time taken, 496 meters. That is our displacement over the time that was taken, which is 24 minutes, uh, 24 seconds. I mean, the wall of this time from zero up to where it ended uh, on our diagram, that's 24. So you're going to divide uh, 496 meters divided by 24. That is going to give us the average velocity uh, that is going to be 20, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, and so on and so on, which is 20, 6, 6, 7 in meters per second. Remember, this is velocity measured in meters per second, not uh, acceleration. Acceleration is the one uh, that is measured in meters per square second, but uh, uh, velocity is what? Meters per second. Even though it's called average velocity, it's still velocity. All right? I hope we are together there. It's still what? velocity all right so on this diagram i think we are done uh let's move on to other question 1.2 uh, we are given that on 1.2 there there is a scooter there all right on 1.2 they are saying uh a scooter reduces its velocity all right it reduces its velocity meaning to say it's starting from somewhere let's see 1.3 so it is starting from a certain point this is our velocity in meters per second uh, this is our time in seconds. So it started at a certain point, which is at what? At 30 meters per second. So it's at 30 meters per second. This is the velocity here where it started. But it reduces. To reduce is a deceleration. So there's a deceleration that is happening like this. Up to a certain point, all right? In uh, to uh, From 30 to 25. So it did not reach a zero, no. It, it, it reached a certain point from that 30 to a certain point, maybe 25 is somewhere here. This is where it corresponds with what? With the 25. From 30 to 25 meters per second in 0 0.5 seconds, which means the time that is corresponding down there, it's 0 0.5. We do not know what's going to happen. Is it going to accelerate and go down? Is it going to, uh, we do not know what's going to happen with this scooter, with this scooter later on. What we know about this scooter is that it decelerated from 30 to 25 meters per second within 0 0.5 seconds. That is what we know only. That is what we're given, only that part. You do not know what's going to happen later on. Answer the question. Work with the question, right? So this is our question, 1.3. Determine on 1.31, all right? Determine... The deceleration of the scooter, as we can see, there is a reduction in speed. The speed is reducing. So it's, there is what? A deceleration there. But the way that you calculate your deceleration is the same way as you calculate your acceleration, only that the deceleration is going to take a negative. All right. So from the formulas, from the diagram like this, we understand that acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. Whereby the change in velocity, it's V2, the final velocity, which is uh, in terms of V1 and V2, you can say this is our point one, this is our point two. So it's going to be V2 minus V1 
over T2 minus T1. If you want to use the formula, V2 is the final velocity at what? At 25 minus V1 where it started at 30. Over the time it ended T2, 0 0,5 minus T1, which is at zero. So that is how you can calculate this and it's going to give us negative 10 meters per square second. That is, our, that is a deceleration. A negative shows that it's decelerating. Okay, so you can even write as deceleration is 10. We are now answering the question that the deceleration is 10 meters per square second. From the formula, you get a negative, which is fine. Or we could have calculated the same way as we, uh, uh, the same way as we did in the previous case of using the formulas because we understand that we are starting from a certain point, ending at a certain point within a certain time frame. So we can go back to the same formula for V is equal to u plus a t. What we want is the a, whereby v is given as the final velocity, which is the one at the final point, that is what? 25 minus u, uh, sorry, is equal to u, uh, which is our initial where we started from. We started at what? At 30. From our information here, from two, from, from, from 32. So this is u, 30 meters per second, two v, uh, 25 meters per second in 0 0.5 seconds. T is 0 0.5 seconds. You just use your formula direct because everything is there. What we want is the A. So we said our U here is what? Uh, 25. We started at what? 25. So this uh, at 30, sorry, 30 plus 80. This is T, uh, the time, which is 0 0.5. So you're going to have 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. All right, so we're going to transpose 25 minus 30 is equal to A times 0, 0,5. This will be 0, 0,5 A. Uh, and if you subtract 25 minus 30, that's minus 5 is equal to 0, 0,5 A. So if we divide by 0, 0,5, by 0, 0,5, both sides, this will give us the value of A, which is going to be negative 10 meters per square second. That is how we could have also calculated the same deceleration. So like I said, a deceleration, it's a negative acceleration. That's it. It's just a negative acceleration, just like that. All right? So that is how we could have done this. So, so many ways. Now we are bringing you guys more methods, uh, like ways of answering. You're not supposed to be stuck on one, on one point. No, use different ways. 1.32, determine the distance traveled in 0, 0.5 seconds. Also there, we've got two ways to calculate the same distance. The first thing we can use the area as we have got our sketch here. We said the distance uh, can be given as what? As the area, all right? Distance is equivalent to area. So that's 1.32 distance or displacement. So distance is equal to area under the graph. So we said this is area under the graph. So if it is area under the graph, what does it mean? We're gonna calculate the area, I don't know. You're gonna take this as a rectangle here and a triangle on top or you're going to take as the wall of the trapezium like this, right? So you can take it like that, or you can take it like this, a rectangle down here and a triangle on top. So there are two shapes. But as for me, I'm just going to take it as a trapezium, like as it is like this, as a trapezium. Remember, you're going to need the sides that are parallel and also the perpendicular height, which is this one. So it's going to be half sum of the parallel sides. Remember our formula, half of A plus B, times the perpendicular height, which is half of the sides that are parallel. The wall of this side is 30. So that's 30 plus this side, which is 25, times the perpendicular height from here to here is 0, 0.5. So that's going to be our distance. Distance is area. So if you calculate this, you're going to get 13.75 meters, just like that. Okay? Or we could have used the formulas all right, we could have used the formulas. Uh, remember, we got our acceleration, which is our deceleration here as negative 10. Uh, and also the other information that we are given, like I said, yeah, I gave you the information. I wrote it down here, uh, U and this. Uh, we also have A, which is negative 10 meters per square second. We can also use these formulas to calculate S. Remember from the formulas that I gave you guys, uh, I said also displacement. So this is another way. S is equal to ut plus half at squared remember about this formula and also there's this one 
v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. I'm going to try also this because I use this one. All right. So s is equal to ut, u, which is uh, u, that is uh, our initial there, which is 30. So that's 30 times the time. It was covered in 0 0.5 seconds, which is our time, plus half of a. A is the acceleration. Remember, A, we got negative 10. So it's negative 10 times T squared, our time, which is 0, 0,5. So this is 0, 0,5 squared. So still, uh, we are going to obtain S in this case. So our S uh, was going to be 13,75. So that was going to be 13,75 in meters. So guys, as you can see, there are different ways of answering your questions different ways and ways and ways that you can use to answer your questions. Uh, so this is what we are after in this session, uh, which is, uh, um, what am I trying to say is that in this session that we are in, in this uh, session that we are in, uh, we are going to have as much revisions this year uh, for those who are writing uh, with us uh, having sessions from Maison African Motives, we are going to have many sessions that we're going to have many methods, like I said. So I want you to guys to know ma many methods. So let me let me do it because, uh, like I said, this is the session for methods. Let me also answer with this one again. We could have used this uh, formula that I listed here uh, because something you say, this year we're going to do this, then you don't do it. It's going to be a problem again. So let me start it now because we will be talking like this, guys. And you know, this pressure, you might not even answering what you said you're going to do. So let's do this one. We could have used this formula. Uh, v squared is equal to u squared, uh, my, uh, u squared plus 2as. It's there on our formula sheet. So as we want to make s, we can make s the subject. All right, so that is another way again. V squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. So you're going to make s the subject, which is our distance from displacement formula. So it's going to be v squared minus u squared is equal to 2as. Remember, we want s. So you're going to divide by 2a. It's a product. So divide by 2a here. It's going to cancel. We remain with s. So s was going to be equal to v squared minus u squared over 2a. So S is equal to, so if you know this formula, because some of us, we know this one as it is, there is no need for you to start right from here. No, 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 guys. Uh -uh. This one is for someone who knows this, but does not know this one. You need to manipulate and make as this. In fact, you just substitute here, guys. Yeah, yeah just substitute here. It's fine. There's no need for you to make as the subject, but guys, we are mathematicians. As you are doing engineering, you are a mathematician. All right, V squared, our V squared is the final, which is uh, 25. U is 30. So it's 25 minus 30. 25 squared minus 30 squared over 2 times A. A is the acceleration. And what is our acceleration? That's a negative 10. So there we are given a negative 10. All right. So S was going to be the same. Uh, that will be same answer. Let's see. It's supposed to be the same answer there. Okay, let me bring my calculator here. Uh, put a fraction, 25 squared minus 30 squared like this over two times, two times negative 10, two times negative 10 like this. All right, that's 55 over four, change to a decimal, 37, 13,75, uh, 13,75 in meters. This is uh, displacement in meters, distance in meters. So as you can see, it's the same answer as what we got previously. Different ways, different methods, different formulas. So guys, engineering science, N2, it's in your hands. You can manipulate, work the way that you want. As long it is true and valid, you're going to get your full marks. All right, so that's it, guys, from Maison African Motives, till we meet again.